You have thoughts on this. I've seen them on Twitter. I do have thoughts. Uh, I think the change is good. At the end of the day, Johnny I has been there for 20 plus years. He's worked really hard. He's designed and launched a bunch of industry leading, world changing products. I think he has broader ambitions. The view from inside Apple is that he's done a bunch of one off projects over the years. He wants to focus on those more than turning out a new iPhone every year. He's going to go off and do that and still be involved in designing the company. I do, however, think the Wall Street Journal is a good paper. Trip Mickle is a good reporter. A lot of the stories in that piece are things that have been floating around for years about Ive being more disconnected, about him paying less attention. And I think he went and reported them out and printed them. And I think Apple really, really takes issue with the characterization of the company changes versus, hey, these are some stories that are floating around. So were you surprised to see that email from Tim Cook directly? I, I was surprised. Um, you know, Apple News is a major news distribution service that he runs. I think it's important for him to not take shots at journalism without backing it up with actual refutations of facts. And not just that, right, but this was very different than when he refuted that Bloomberg report on the Chinese spy chips. You know, he picked that apart piece by piece. This was sort of a shorter email that just said it was a total mischaracterization. He didn't actually call for a correction or take anything specific. Do you think that um, it was done in haste, or do you think this is, you know, important thing for Tim Cook to do to defend his company without a whole lot of evidence? I think the Ive story is important to their stock price. Obviously, it was pretty volatile after the announcement. The Bloomberg story was a national security story. I think they had to approach that a little bit differently and say, hey, you know, iCloud is not affected by secret Chinese chips in our servers. That's, that's a little bit of a different uh, scale of story. I think the proof here is really in the pudding. Right? Apple is shifting to be a services-oriented company. Tim Cook says it out loud. The story of can they design another category-leading product, we, I think it's time to put that to bed. There's not going to be another iPhone. There's not going to be another iPad. These things change the world. Are they going to compromise the user experience of these products to push their services is the heart of the question. Well, the other, the other question it raises is what the bench looks like under Tim Cook. Are there any, is there any reason for Wall Street to be concerned? So that is a, a great question. Um, Johnny Ive was equally as famous as Steve Jobs. That was his voice in all those product design videos. I think they Angela Ahrens was kind of a rock star. She left. She left. Um, and, you know, and part of that Wall Street Journal story was they brought in a bunch of fashion people to market the watch, and that didn't work out, and now it's his health and fitness device, which is where the focus has been. I think they're trying to show you the bench. They're pushing Jeff Williams. They're pushing these other executives. We'll see. But, you know, you just mentioned service, but I think the whole point of this report and even just the comment you're making right now, it sort of hits right at the heart of investor and industry concerns around this company, which is what is Apple's next act, especially in this post Steve Jobs era, um, where you can make the argument that there has been a struggle to, really, to, to realize the full success of these newer innovations. Yeah, I, I, I think that is always the question that, that Apple faces. The view from inside of Apple is that this has not changed. This is Johnny Ives' design team. It's as integrated with engineering as it's ever been. I think the view from outside is, yeah, but your big idea is Oprah made us a TV show. Hmm. And those things have to get reconciled. Something you just said really <laughs> stuck out to me. You said there's not going to be another iPhone or another iPad. I was just in Shenzhen, China a few weeks ago with the CEO of Huawei, and he says they're going to create the next iPhone or the next major innovation. I mean, are we seeing that big disparity? Is it going to come from China? Are investors basically thinking that Apple's all the innovation is already there? Now they got to turn to things like services. Is that an opening for a company like Huawei, which replaced Apple, by the way, as the number two smartphone seller in the world earlier this year? And but think about the addressable market for smartphones. It's everybody in the world. Like you have to come up with a product where the, the total addressable market is literally every single person. And that's the smartphone, that's the tablet, that's the laptop. Maybe that's going to be AR glasses, but that's a ways away. Right now you're, you're looking at attach rates for AirPods, right? Which is every iPhone owner, which is a huge number. But can you invent another product with an addressable market of literally every single person? That's a very tall order. All right, so here's my other burning question. What the next chapter for Johnny Ive looks like? I know he's creating this company, Love From. Apple's going to be the first client. But long term, where do you think his designs end up? Uh, you know, he's very focused on the high end of the market. He's been making uh, a bunch of luxury products for you know, red auctions and things like that. He doesn't have to do anything. He's a knight. <laughs> He's a hundred millionaire, billionaire. Uh, he's got as many Jaguars as he can afford. Uh, I think he's very focused on pushing things forward that 
people aren't looking at. He has the ability to do that. I doubt we're going to see a bunch of consumer products from Johnny Ive.